Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing will use some of its $6.8 billion U.S. government grant to build its first U.S. hub in Phoenix. Joining us right now with more on this is Leo Brainerd. She is the director of the White House's National Economic Council. And, uh, Leo, let's talk a little bit about this, what it means uh, for the country. Yeah, this is a really important announcement by TSMC. It really means that we are bringing leading edge semiconductor manufacturing to the United States that is in line with President Biden's vision. And it's a new chapter for the American semiconductor industry. Right now, 90% of those leading edge chips TSMC manufactures in Taiwan. Taiwan uh, is an important supplier, but now TSMC's uh, committing to three fabs here in Arizona. Um, and of course, uh, they produce the leading edge chips that go into high speed compute, uh, machine learning, uh, AI models, uh, and uh, EV and AV technologies. This is an incredibly important uh, announcement uh, for the future of high tech in the United States. There have already been delays that have been discussed with this for the scheduling for production at those plants. One of them came uh, when TSMC said that it was going to have to put that timetable back because they couldn't find enough skilled workers. A second came uh, when it delayed production for a second factory that was built, being built on the Arizona site. So when can we realistically expect this to be up and running and to make it so that we are less reliant on chips that are manufactured in, in Taiwan? Yeah, well, as you know, these uh, very large, complex uh, fabs uh, require uh, complicated construction schedules. But actually, TSMC is on track for the construction of these fabs. Uh, they anticipating having test wafers out of their uh, first fab uh, this quarter. Uh, production coming online next year, and then uh, the second fab uh, two years after that, and the third fab uh, before the end of the decade. So uh, right now they're on track, uh, and again, really important uh, to see not just the leading edge fabrication uh, capacity in Phoenix, but we're also seeing suppliers, advanced packaging, a whole ecosystem growing up around those uh, commitments. Oh, so when can we expect to, to have a, a reality of a chip supply chain that is not so reliant? Are, are you thinking 2028, 2030 or beyond? Yeah, no, the, the, we are seeing uh, already that uh, next year uh, that first uh, fab will be producing uh, advanced uh, chips. Uh, and the second one, uh, two years after that, the third before the end of the decade. So all of those will be producing uh, leading edge fab uh, chips. And of course, uh, we recently had an Intel uh, commitment in this space as well. So there are multiple uh, companies uh, that are making those commitments. So we do anticipate seeing that production coming online actually over the next year, uh, three years, and then before the end of the decade. Lael, there uh, obviously are a lot of signs that the U.S. economy is really firing on all cylinders. If you looked at the jobs report last week, that was much stronger than anticipated. The biggest issue that's been a concern, though, has been inflation and whether that continues to stay stubborn. Uh, we do get a CPI number coming out tomorrow. What is your expectation for that number? What would it mean if it's a hotter number than economists have expected to this point? So what I would do is not over-index on one data point. If you look at the broader picture, that jobs report was actually quite balanced. Uh, it suggested that we can see balanced expansion uh, because, of course, labor force participation ticked up again. Um, and we've seen a big expansion uh, in uh, the supply side of the economy. With regard to inflation, uh, we've seen uh, it come down by two-thirds. Uh, and I anticipate that we'll continue to see uh, steady progress uh, on inflation over uh, coming months. Uh, but of course, uh, that's really important uh, for American consumers. So we're going to keep uh, our eye on that. Uh, but I anticipate inflation will continue the remarkable right. progress that it's made. Well, what do you say? I don't know. We've been talking for the past couple of days about this Greg Gibb piece in the in the Wall Street Journal. It looks at the way people are polled about how they feel about the economy, yet some of how the data uh, seems to be at odds with it. But I wanted to ask you, when you look at inflation over the last three and a half years, what you tell the voter who legitimately feels and, 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 and the data would support their feeling uh, that 
their wages have been outstripped by inflation. Yeah, so it is uh, difficult for American consumers, uh, and the president is very focused uh, on the fact that when you go into the grocery store, uh, some of those prices went up, and although they are not rising any longer, they are higher uh, than they were pre-pandemic. Uh, so we're seeing, for instance, a price of a gallon of milk and the price of a dozen eggs coming down over the last year, but still up relative to pre-pandemic. Now, we know uh, from the data that uh, the earnings uh, wages uh, have uh, risen much faster than inflation. And so people actually have more purchasing power even with those price increases than they did pre-pandemic, and they have more wealth even with uh, those price increases. But we have to keep fighting to bring down the prices of health care, where we are getting insulin prices down, inhaler prices down, caps on drug prices, uh, as well as on things like uh, grocery.